times since I've done a video, but uh, and since I've done one, I've kind of gotten known for my epoxy finish uh, here in the west coast of Florida and well, elsewhere too. But uh, I wanted to kind of go over it. There's always a lot of questions about it, so I thought this might help clear them up. But uh, with my epoxy finish, a lot of what I'm doing are sinks. This is a uh, ambrosia maple sink. Uh, wood came from uh, Georgia, from two boys' trees, or two trees' boys, <laughs> Elizabeth up there. Anyway, beautiful piece, and it, as you can see, the finish on it is uh, quite glossy. And uh, we've had a couple of these sinks in our house for about six years, and they're still working great. And also, uh, another piece of the ambrosia maple, coat my vases with them inside and out. And this would allow you to put water and cut flowers in them, which makes a double duty. Uh, I'd like to think they're very pretty as an art piece as well as uh, functional. But the epoxy just brings out the grain and color like no other finish that I have, uh, have come across. So what we're looking at right now is basically I'm set up to begin finishing these 11 pieces. These 10, uh, have, I think there's 10 anyway, have been done. And the reason they're upside down is I still need to apply epoxy to the bottom. And the reason for that is the way that I mount these uh, when they're rotating. When I turn them on the lathe, I always leave a little extra. Here's my tenon and then a little bit extra down here. Uh, so that my screw, which I welded up these pieces, will go in here, screw in uh, very quickly and just tighten it up so now I can handle it while it's wet with epoxy and take it wherever it needs to go. So the first thing that we do is bring it over here, turn on my lights, uh, and get ready to go uh, putting on the epoxy. Putting on the epoxy, uh, just use a regular brush. I buy these on excuse me on Amazon for uh, about 50 cents a piece of what it work, works out to. There's a whole packet of a multitude of different sizes, uh, but it, I, I think it's actually less than 50 cents. The challenge comes to, to get inside where I need to have a bent brush like this so that I can reach in as I'm applying the epoxy and bring it up to the rim. So I need to make this type of a uh, bent brush to get in there. Uh, I also, very easy, and I think you've seen these acid brushes, I'll bend those to help get right up to the rim if I need to. But the way that I make these, uh, I'll take one of these brushes and just take the uh, plastic handle out and uh, end up with something that looks like this. It's what's left of the brush, but I'll remove the handle and I'll pack a piece of wood the right size down there and there and with epoxy so that holds it firm, everything is solid. Then I just put it in my vise and take a, a stick and my pin nailer, which I think everybody's familiar with what that is, and uh, in the vise it lets me get it up very tight and with the pin nail I can go across and put in several pins and now it's ready to go and once I get through with the epoxy and I can pull this off and actually use the sticks again so that's how I get to the inside now as I said I've got this one set up and ready to go get all my lights on the next thing is mixing the epoxy. I've got my mixing station over here. I just use standard cups. Get these at Party World or something like that. And here I've got a graded thing. I've kind of used a use this measuring cup marked it and I've put in like the red makes me nine ounces so I put in three ounces and six ounces because it's a two to one mix that I'm using and uh, I've got this marked for anywhere from 
one and a half ounces, six ounces, nine ounces, twelve ounces, and then three ounces and four and a half on this side. So that way I don't have to worry about pouring stuff back and forth, that kind of thing. And here's the, the epoxy I use. It's called High Gloss Ultra Clear that I get from uh, fiberglass coatings in St. Petersburg. And so this makes the process pretty easy. All I got to do make up six ounces to get started. Just pour in up to three ounces and see how it's there. And if you pour in too much of the uh, activator you can always pour it out but once you start pouring in the, uh, the resin you're, you're done. So the resin I'll then pour up to the next red line. So now I've got six ounces and all that's left to do is stir it up, mix it, and we're going to step into the kitchen because the other thing I always do is I microwave it for a few seconds before I start applying it and the microwaving heats it up and makes it very thin so it really, uh, especially when you've got a heavy spalted piece, it becomes part of the wood and just gets right into it. So. We're going to step into the kitchen and do a little microwaving. Three. Stirring it up, obviously you want it to uh, be completely mixed. And I keep going around the outside to make sure nothing gets trapped. Uh, this method, I've really never had any problem with it. And I just stir it till it's, it's clear. When you first get started, it's a little cloudy. And once it gets clear, uh, you're there. There's some bubbles in it. But what I'm doing, uh, bubbles are generally not a, a big problem. So, I always tell you, I usually uh, do this when my wife's not home, but she's filming, so I can't, I've been, I've been caught. But that's about six ounces, and uh, I'll set my timer for about uh, eight seconds, doesn't take much, and let it go. It's always exciting watching it cook. And that's it. I probably can't see, but uh, it is much thinner, runnier now, and we're ready to apply it. So we'll step back out to the shop, to my machine, and start putting it on. like we're ready. Just one more time around the edges. Now the first thing we need to do obviously uh, we need to take care of the inside. So pretty simple deal. We just pour some in. A few ounces maybe. Doesn't take much. And uh, my handy dandy holder there. And just kind of look inside to see Make sure it's kind of got enough to get around. I may be having more. I don't know if you can really see in there, but anyway, it's uh, starting to get around. This is I'm taking the brush, I'll stick it in there, and start getting a hold of some of it. Make sure I mop it. It's a it's a mopping operation. Mop it back up, and then start coming up to the edge. And I can with this light, I can kind of see down there and see if there's spots I've missed. And this was a heavily spalted piece, so it's, uh, I sure want to make sure I get it all done. One thing you don't want to do is leave too much in, so if it looks like I've over, overloaded it, it's not a big deal. Uh, just make sure it's covered. Spinning it around will do that. And then I can pull it out and start applying some to the outside and I think you can start to see the color and all the little fills that I've had to do which were the wormholes begin popping out. So if there is a little too much in there, all you got to do is pour it back 
generally if none comes out like that, I'm just about right. So I'm, I'm good on that one because I can see in there that uh, everything's gotten coated. So I'll just make sure that I've got the lip done well. This brush is working very well. So then get into my regular brush and uh, the idea is, is to get as little not dripping as, par as possible. Uh, the uh, epoxy is about a hundred bucks a gallon, so you don't want to waste it. Uh, so we just keep going around. By the way, some of the, I don't know if you can really see it, but I filled with some black epoxy that's mixed with some coffee beans to kind of give it a little character. And then bigger hole there I filled with uh, brass shavings and epoxy. And uh, kind of gives a neat look to it. But we just keep going around. Until we got everything covered and uh, look for any dry spots. Then what I'll do is just kind of start spinning it, get a little bit on the brush, which kind of tells me uh, if I feel a drag, I know I've missed a spot. And uh, you just keep going. And the way I make my tenon on the back, I always kind of leave it so it starts over to the bottom. Uh, it doesn't, obviously as you saw before, it doesn't make the bottom. But boy, it's going to be a pretty piece. And uh, the other thing gotta got to watch for is, is sometimes I'll lose a, a brush hair. And uh, that doesn't really do much for it. So that's roughly it for the, the first coat. Thing is really sucking it up on some of these really dry spots. This is a old piece of magnolia I left in a friend's backyard for about a year and uh, ended up being really, really a beautiful piece. Then I'll come over and I'll just pick one of these to put it on and begin rotating. I think as you can see I've got it six on each side so I can actually do 12 pieces. I made this machine and uh, actually made those large wheels. I found a uh, site online to calculate the size of the pulleys. If you've got this pulley, two inch pulley, a 19 inch pulley, and they're 10 inches apart, 12 inches, whatever they are, it'll tell you what, how big a belt. So it worked out really well. I've got another adjustment in there to keep those tight and it comes up with the other six. Looks very much overbuilt, but realize sometimes I've got one that might be 30 inches long hanging out here, and I've got bigger ones for those, bigger screw things. So now this will continue rotating for about an hour and a half to two hours in that realm, and when this gets tacky, I'll come back and put another coat on. So right now I've got some more epoxy I've got to keep on applying. So I'm going to do that. We'll come back toward the end, and we'll uh, see how we're doing.
next morning. These have been on the machine uh, probably about six hours last night. I just let them rotate till they really get start getting uh, hard. Uh, it takes about 24 hours for the uh, epoxy to fully cure to its, its full hardness. So we're creeping up on that. Uh, but I think as you look at some of these, the, uh, the finish that comes out is uh, very attractive and like I said, it shows off the grain and the color. Uh, this is a piece of spalted magnolia and uh, it really came out nice as, as did uh, a lot of these others. So now uh, what I'll do is uh, there are some uh, flaws that I'll need to work out and what I do with that uh, I have a uh, little small DA sander uh, that made by Onyx great little uh, DA and I use uh, the Tri-X by 3M up to about 5,000 and these just bolt in so I'll work on oh, anywhere from 1,000 to up to 5,000 and then use the Meguiar's uh, polish and uh, Meguiar's compound and then the polish. Uh, when they come off there's a eh, little bit of a, a film on there and this kind of uh, clears it all off and then they'll be ready. They'll be done. So that's, uh, that's all that's left and that's, that's how it happens. But uh, appreciate you all watching and uh, stay tuned for more videos. Thank you. Did mean to point out too, uh, the bottoms have been finished, and just like the uh, the pieces, they got three coats. Again, similar similar fashion where they were uh, once they got tacky, got another coat on, and it's good to do them while I'm uh, doing some other pieces. Uh, waste a lot less, um, a lot less epoxy. The only thing left to do now is to sign them. And the way I sign them, uh, obviously uh, John Williams, and then uh, they'll be the year. These will be 2018. And uh, for instance, this piece is uh, Tula Poplar, so it'll be 2018-345, whichever piece of Tula Poplar this is. If I've turned three pieces already, this will be 2018-4. So that's just the way I keep track of things and, and uh, keeps my inventory straight. So that's it, and uh, once again, thanks for watching, and uh, look for another video later.